Clash of Clans versus Infinity Kingdom. What's up my friends? My name is Echo and welcome back to the channel where today I'm comparing two of my favorite games, Clash of Clans and Infinity Kingdom. Both builder style war games, but also very different at the same time. We all know that in Clash of Clans, you build up your base, you try and make it as strong as you can, which at this point in time is a Town Hall 13, and then you try to defend against your opponents and attack others. As you're seeing right now, I'm doing attack of my own, coming on with a bit of a Yeti smash strategy and uh, doing a pretty nice job against this base if I do say my, so myself. I'm using a replay here so that I can focus on my words rather than on my attack. But we cover Clash of Clans regularly on the channel and we have for five years but I've started playing another game called Infinity Kingdom as well which is a ton of fun and I urge you to play along with me while you're playing Clash of Clans along with me as well. They are both great games but Clash of Clans you don't have to worry about getting like your whole city, your whole town hall, your whole base taken down. Yes, you can lose it and you can get beaten in war, you can get beaten while farming, but there's only a limit to what you lose, right? You could lose a certain amount of resources, but that's really it. And then things just build themselves back up. You go on the offense, you go attack someone, take out their stuff, and you have pretty good control of deployment of your troops. You can deploy your troops over here, over here, use abilities here and there, and you really have a lot of control of your troops, of your heroes on the battlefield. This is what we know, this is what we love from Clash of Clans. This is why Clash of Clans is so massive right now inside of esports as well, and part of the reason why I love doing casting, because I love doing it with Clash of Clans and for Clash of Clans. But I did mention that I recently found a fond love for the game Infinity Kingdom, which I'm actually gonna leave as uh, a couple of links in the description of this video. If you wanna download it and try it out, you can download it on Bluestacks or you can download it on mobile. Both of my links are down below. But let me take you over there to give you just a peek of what I'm doing inside of this Kingdom Builder, which has got some differences from Clash of Clans. Welcome to Infinity Kingdom. Let me show you around to tell you how this differs from Clash of Clans. Notice my base looks very different than Clash of Clans. It's all set up and we're upgrading pretty well as well, as you can see already at a castle level 28. But inside of this game, you're building up your, your castle right here. You're building up your spot. And I actually have to do a little bit of upgrades right now. So I'll do that with you guys while I'm here. We're gonna get our lumber mills up that are gonna be producing for us just just as your resource stations would inside of Clash of Clans. But here you have a much different thing in mind. Your alliance is built up of 150 people that you use and that you work together with to control an entire land, to control an entire server of people. You could see right here, we are looking at a very big map that you could be in total control of inside of an even more enormous world of different servers where there's tons of things going on inside and and really it's about war it's about upgrading it's about farming it's about gathering you could see my territory right here you may notice i have clash with eric right here next to me team mcvenom right here we have clashing duke if you recall clashing duke we have ss Ocelot and SS is the uh, Alliance name Shadow Syndicate. We have a lot of people from Clash of Clans that have come on over to play this game and to really get involved in the fun stuff going on. But why don't I get into some of the battles so that you can see the dynamics of it and tell you more about the game. Now I'm gonna set this battle on auto just so that I could talk to you guys about it and really focus on this. But there's a lot of mechanics inside of this game. You have immortals who are your heroes. You have a dragon who is basically another hero on the battlefield. And you have your troops that play behind the immortals. You have abilities for your immortals, which is just like a champion or just like your heroes inside of Clash of Clans. And you try to take on the opponents, whether that be gnomes, gnome bosses, walls, other castles. You go into battles to get more rewards, to further upgrade your heroes and to upgrade your city so that you can, in the end, have a ton of power and be able to dominate inside of your kingdom. I think the graphics inside of this game are incredible. They really do look great. And there's a bit of comedy along with it as well. They don't take the game too seriously where they don't want to have any fun, but they do definitely keep that competitive nature to it as well. You have, now notice right here, we're storming the castle. We're trying to take, take control of this castle, sieging the wall as the wall is trying to defend against me. All of the immortals inside of the game have different abilities, different supers that can do different things, and you could really customize and build out 
how you want to do your attacks and what your attacks actually look like. Now, in the Hall of Immortals, you have a ton that you could play with. There's a ton that you can build with, and there's a bunch of ways that you could actually put them together. Like we have Ramses right here. He's one of my primaries in my march. Or maybe we're going to want to go with Merlin, who is an epic inside of the game as well. Or maybe Attila the Hun. These are all historical uh, people that you may know from the history books. We also have Helen of Troy, who has been a primary one in my main march as well. But there are a bunch of different immortals that you could summon inside of the game that you could play with. And I have many more that I have yet to summon. As you can see from the artwork right here, each one of the immortals will become alive in this portrait as you unlock them inside of the game. And the end game is going to be right here with the holy end with those shadow immortals not only immortals because this right here is what basically made me fall in love with the game and that is the dragon cave you have dragons inside of the game and for my primary march i'm going with a water dragon who when i started with my water dragon he actually came to me like this looking like a baby that we had to progress and basically build up over time he's gotten stronger and stronger but there are many that you can choose from you have the Ice, water dragon, the earth dragon, the lightning dragon, wind, fire, and when you have the shadow dragon coming to you as an egg and eventually evolving into something pretty miraculous like this, one of the strongest inside of the game. Can't wait to unlock this. There's definitely a lot of progression inside of this game, a lot of grinding inside of the game, so you're gonna really wanna have the help of your alliance and the time to spend in the game. With many structures to upgrade, Troops to train, as you can see, we have all different types of troops that we can train inside of the game to build up our army. You also are always gonna have research to do inside of your academy, whether it be for your production, your troops, your immortals, or the defense inside the game. You're always gonna have stuff to do, but don't forget, this is just your very local city. A lot of things go on out here in the open world where you're gonna be playing with your alliance to do other fun things like maybe take down some gnome bosses where you would be getting dragon chests for rewards or maybe you'd want to search up and attack some gnomes themselves they're going to drop some rewards for you and going to give you resources speed ups crystals and even armor and gear that you can use inside of these battles infinity kingdom is a really fun open world open server kingdom builder style game where i've built some amazing friendships and that is going to be something that's part of what i bring to you guys here on the channel regularly so if you love clash of clans and i know you do because you're here you really might want to try out infinity kingdom as well to play alongside i'm not trying to make you convert because it's definitely feasible to play both of these games i don't believe infinity kingdom is available in india right now yeah, so that kind of stinks. Uh, maybe you could use a VPN or something. I don't know how that even works. I've never had to use one myself, but Infinity Kingdom, tons of fun. In my opinion, the best killed Kingdom Builder out on mobile devices right now. You could also play it on Bluestacks. Again, both of those links are in the description of this video. But really guys, I just wanted to kind of fill you in on another game that's out there that I've been having a lot of fun with. Hope you enjoyed today's video and you could let me know in the comments below which games are you playing right now? Which ones are you enjoying the most? Are you playing kingdom builders like this or are you playing more attack and defense style strategy games like Clash of Clans? Both games, well, they are very different, but they have similarities as well as far as the progression goes and how you would build up your settlement, your kingdom, your town hall, you basically your home. Hope you enjoyed the video today, guys. Remember, I have a Discord server. That's the pinned comment down below that you could come to and we could talk about any mobile games that you like. Server is OP. You guys should come through. If you're here and you play Clash of Clans, remember to use code ECHO whenever you buy gems and shout out a shop or your season pass. And if you're here for Infinity Kingdom, remember, if you've never played it before, download links are down below. I appreciate all of you. Hope you all have a great day be good.